And so Friends AUKUS is born, a new enhanced trilateral security partnership between Australia, the United Kingdom and the United States. It's been almost 18 months since the Australian government announced its plan to acquire nuclear-powered submarines. And the decision remains controversial, not only because it offended the French government. Do you think he lied to you? I don't think, I know. A conventional diesel-powered submarine was not going to meet Australia's strategic requirements. It also caused consternation among our regional neighbours, stoking fears of an arms race in the Indo-Pacific. It is important that we listen to concerns, uh, that we respond to them respectfully. We had a very candid discussion on AUKUS uh, just now, and uh, the malicious position remained the same. The move has also provoked China. We urge the United States, Britain and Australia to revoke their decision to pursue nuclear submarine cooperation. Vice Admiral Meade was part of secret discussions with the US on the possibility of a switch to their nuclear technology before the French deal was dumped. He's since been tasked with devising the makeup of the multi-billion dollar naval transformation. It does represent a substantial capability leap. The details are only weeks away. I spoke to Vice Admiral Meade earlier today. Vice Admiral Meade, welcome to the program. Thank you. Why do we need nuclear powered submarines? Well, our region, the region we live in, has changed. It's become more complex, more fragile, less secure, less stable. And Australia has responded accordingly with a, a preeminent war fighting capability that will defend Australia and protect our people and safeguard our economic prosperity. Was it the rapid rise of the Chinese military that persuaded America to bring Australia into the nuclear tent? Well, when I talk about the change in the region, you see the, the war in Ukraine right now. Um, we, and we have greatly benefited from our trade relationship with China. And we've also seen in recent years a significant modernisation in the Chinese military, particularly their Navy, uh, nuclear powered submarines and aircraft carriers. We look forward to a productful relationship with China. But just for, the, for us to understand, what scale of industry and workforce will you need to develop to support a nuclear propelled submarine program in Australia? We are developing a sovereign capability to build these nuclear-powered submarines, to operate them, to maintain them, and to regulate. So that is a very large ecosystem that we need to develop. We are talking about thousands of jobs, some massive, massive opportunities for Australia. And I would see as part of the industrial base, as this is a truly trilateral contribution, that we would be feeding into their supply chain as well. And what we do down in Adelaide, we can do into US and UK programs. Let's break it down. So the, on the basis of this deal, as I understand it, is that the nuclear reactor, which is the new part of this, the nuclear reactor will be a sealed unit. Will we have the capacity to maintain or handle those reactors in the event of damage or accident or malfunction? So that's correct. The reactor will come to us shielded, welded and sealed, and that will not be open for the life of the submarine for over 30 years. So what happens if something goes wrong? But we will be expected to develop a sovereign capability to be able to maintain that reactor. It is not a set and forget. We will be sending people overseas to US design facilities to understand every element of detail of that reactor. We are expected, and I think the Australian people would expect that we fully understand the workings of that reactor. So in the first instance, when we get our first boat, we'll come to that in a minute, but, but will we still have US personnel on the boat? When we, uh, when we take command of our first boat, we will have sovereign uh, capability, we will be commanding and controlling under the Australian government uh, direction that nuclear powered submarine. Yes, we may have US or UK sea riders on board to assist. 
We have US and UK sea riders in our exchange programs with our current submarines at the moment, as we do with their submarines. What we see happening over the next couple of years is Australian sailors working uh, on board UK submarines, US nuclear powered submarines. So in the event of a conflict, in, a, a, a con I mean a conflict of opinion about how the nuclear reactor is managed, maintained or dealt with in the event of an accident, will we have sovereign control or will in fact that American on board have the ability to decide what happens to the reactor? Australia will have absolutely sovereign control and command of the reactor and of the submarine. What happens if the US nuclear engineer on board, the nuclear physicist on board, disagrees with the decision by the captain? So with all uh, of our ships, submarines, the military, we encourage people to provide advice upwards. And in fact, that's what we expect. We want part of one of the underpinnings of the nuclear program is sound decision making underpinned by strong technical evidence. We would expect anyone, whether it be a foreign engineer or an Australian engineer, to provide advice. Ultimately, the commanding officer of that submarine, the Australian, would have command and control over the reactor, over the submarine, unequivocal. Can you see a point in the future where we would build our own reactors? We're not envisaging that at the moment. Uh, we haven't gone into that. At the moment, uh, the direction from government is, and from the partners, is that a reactor will be provided to us sealed and welded, but we are to, our partners expect, and our partners have given us unbelievable support on this, develop a sovereign capacity to build, to operate, to maintain and regulate. Can we do it quickly enough to have that full sovereign capacity you're talking about? In this case, you're talking about two countries, the US and the UK, with highly developed mature nuclear industries. You're talking about creating one from near scratch. Can you get there fast enough? So the government has indicated to us that they want us to do this as quickly as possible and ensure there is no capability gap. So we are working with our partners on that. Now, both the US and the UK have had accidents in their nuclear industries. I think the number in the UK related to reactors rather than the rest of the nuclear program is around 12. Um, are these reactors safe? What I'd first, the answer to that is yes, unequivocal. How can you be unequivocal when there have been accidents in the past? All right. So uh, we have a long history of uh, dealing with visiting US and UK nuclear powered warships, warships and submarines to Australia. About 280 visits over the past 60 years without incident. The reactors that you're talking about that we've just spoken will be shielded, or welded and sealed, not to be open for the life of the submarine. Um, our number one principle in this whole program, the safety is paramount. What happens if the uh, boat is hit? So nuclear powered submarines are designed under for exacting standards. Clearly, I won't go into the technical details of those standards, but uh, the nuclear powered submarine program, when it is built, is always built on a series of uh, conditions and different scenarios. Let's talk about safety in relation to the fuel because American and British subs run on high enriched weapons grade uranium. French subs, the next generation of French nuclear submarines will run, will run on low enriched uranium. Why choose a submarine that uses weapons grade uranium? First of all, we went to uh, the US and UK, our August partners who have the longest level of knowledge who have been operating submarines longer than anyone else. The reactor itself, as you mentioned, uh, is highly enriched, but it is a sealed unit never to be open for the life of the reactor. Uh, those other reactors you talk about, low enriched, need to be opened every seven years. The fuel needs to be pulled out. It is a very complex and technical job. It raises proliferation issues because you're opening up the core uh, and then you need to do that two or three times in the life of the reactor. Doesn't this also raise, just on the issue, you mentioned proliferation, doesn't this also raise, raise proliferation issues? Because if we've got weapons grade uranium in Australia, why can't Indonesia, Myanmar, the Philippines, why can't they all have weapons grade uranium for a subs program? We have done uh, an extraordinary level of work with the International Atomic Energy Agency uh, over the past 18 months. 
and Australia has an impeccable record when it comes to upholding our non-proliferation obligations. We will continue to uphold uh, that impe impeccable record. Is there um, a, a desire in the Australian Navy for the US to switch to low enriched uranium? So I we, know there's been studies of it since you know, There 2014. has been studies of it. The uh, US at this stage are continuing to have their reactors fueled by highly enriched uranium, uh, as does the UK. We will accept the reactor that's given to us. Um, so there's no push to make, uh, th to make that change? No. We will accept the reactor they give us, and that reactor at the moment is fueled by highly enriched uranium. If nuclear propelled submarines are superior, why wasn't the Navy pushing for them earlier? The region changed. The region changed over the past five years. And, and I, I, would, I think it's important here that we sort of talk about, if I could quickly talk about what these, I think these submarines will be used for. You know, we are an island nation, uh, long coastlines, 99% of our trade comes in via cargo ships, 100 cargo ships per day, delivering the commodities that you and I would just see as day to day. 95% of our telecommunications, our digital, our internet comes in via undersea water cable. So on that end, nuclear powered submarines provide a capability to deploy away from the home shore or to deploy close to the home shore. Isn't it the case that uh, conventional submarines are quieter when operating around the littoral area around the coast? Under different circumstances, depending on what a nuclear powered submarine can do, they, can, they will operate just as quiet. So our nuclear powered submarines will have incredible speed and maneuverability. So they'll be able to get from one place to another quickly. They will remain submerged and undetected for months on end, and they will carry significant strike power. Um the UK Defence Secretary recently suggested that what we might be looking at now is a US, UK, Australia, a new design to be shared amongst all three navies. Doesn't the idea of a new design also create the potential for massive delays in this program? I probably won't specifically comment on Secretary Wallace, uh, what he said there. What I can talk about though, this truly is a trilateral contribution with the three partners working together. What we want to do is emphasise, exploit and leverage best practice US, UK, Australia. How does their industrial base set up? How is the UK's? What do we need to do here in Australia? We are all seized by this opportunity to deliver a submarine that is sovereign to Australia one that we can deliver safely, securely, and as quickly as possible. If we are looking at a new model submarine, we would then be talking about building a new submarine in Australia with no history. Again, the question is, isn't, doesn't that necessarily mean we're going to be looking at much longer delays before we see a boat in the water? I won't speculate on that specific sort of hypothesis. Um, I've mentioned before, my team is absolutely seized to deliver this capability as soon as possible. It's been a directive from government. It's also been a directive that there be no capability gap. I'm highly confident there will be no capability gap. I am looking forward to the announcement by the three leaders in due course. How many boats will be built here? Um, we'll need, need to let government make that announcement, but they are absolutely committed to building the boats in South Australia. We want to commence those boats towards the end of this decade in actually constructing them. We can need to design the yard and build the yard, but we are making moves very quickly with the South Australian government on that. So how realistically, how soon could you get an Australian made boat into the water? I'll let sort of government make that type of announcement. Did you think that they were a better option before this, before the AUKUS decision was made? I, I probably never really cast my mind to it. It wasn't something that I was focused on in the Navy. Um, uh, but, you know, for, though, for what I mentioned before, the characteristics of nuclear powered submarines, coupled with the way the region has deteriorated, certainly has led government to the understanding that if you want a capability that can um, future proof your, your way of life to protect this $2.1 trillion economy of ours, to keep the trade coming in, 
to defend the homeland and protect our people than nuclear-powered submarines. Some call them the apex predator of the ocean. They deliver that pre-eminent capability. At what cost? Defending Australia is not cheap. Have you got a figure, a total figure now for this program? So as part of the optimal pathway, we have provided government costings. And what is that figure? Uh, I'll let government uh, do that, the announcement there, Sarah. Just come back to you. It's been reported that you were part of a parallel team that was examining prospects for nuclear-powered submarines while another admiral was still working with the French on conventional subs. Do you consider that those secret arrangements were in the national interest? Uh, I was working on the program. Uh, I said, I mentioned I've been on this program for two years now. Um, it was directed by government uh, based on the changes to the region, based on providing government options. At, at the end of the day, the government uh, was provided options by the Department of Defence and they went down the nuclear pathway. And were you sent to America or sent to the, to the Pentagon really to persuade the US that arming Australia with nuclear powered submarines was in the interest of both countries? Well, I think it's a bold statement to think that a Australian Navy Admiral, uh, Admiral could sway the US establishment. Uh, there was some reluctance at first from the Americans, particularly in relation to non-proliferation, wasn't there? So we went over there to do a set of talks with the US and the UK to establish this. Uh, what I can tell you is in all aspects, whether it be uh, State Department, Navy reactors, US Navy, uh, the NSC, uh, um, all I've seen is unyielding, unwavering, unfettered, committed to the AUKUS program, commitment to the AUKUS program. And I see that in the UK as well. Do you think you can get nuclear propelled submarines in the water in the time frame that you are setting out? Yes. Vice Admiral Meade, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Sarah.